What's going on everyone? Ancap24 here from playbook.gg coming back with another video and today we're going to talk about a cover 3 beater out of the single back Y trips called Jet 6 Soar that I really like to use. Now if this is the first time checking out our channel and you want to win more games playing Madden, hit that subscribe button below. Don't forget to also click that bell icon to make sure you never miss any of our videos. So this play Jet 6 Soar has a lot of different applications, can be a lot of different coverages, there's a lot of different setups that I've used in the past. I don't want to go through all of them in one lengthy video. It just kind of, you know, drags on a YouTube's video. But I will kind of just go over what we want to do with this is basically look at it as a cover three beater and uh, kind of hammer that in for you, okay? The first thing I like to do is flip the play. It's just a comfort thing for me. You're going to run this to the short side of the field where the comeback is to the short side, okay? So if you are running it the normal way, where if you look at it here where the comeback's on the right side, you want to be on the right hash mark. If you're running on the left hash mark, make sure you're running it flipped, okay? That's the rule of thumb. What we're going to do is we're going to look at some of these routes and kind of just show you a lot of why this play works as well as it does. It has three special routes on the field. The first one's the X receiver. It is a rounded comeback. We've gone over rounded comebacks in our um, subscription at playbook.gg and how we can use this to our advantage. They're very rare. You probably see maybe a handful in uh, popular playbooks, but most of the time you see one or two in, in other playbooks. Okay, This is a rounded uh, comeback. It doesn't matter if you have a deep route runner that's really high like Julio, or if I go ahead and flip this and show it with Ridley, it is a rounded comeback. It doesn't have a sharp edge to it. It just rounds it out. It helps with this play, okay? The next thing we're going to show you is that this A route has a really nice crossing route. It's a short cross. It's not a slant. It's not a drag. It gets elevation as it goes across the field. Really does a good job of pulling down coverage. And the B route is a really nice dig route that's got two sharp angles in it, one at the 40 and then one again before he goes across the field. So all those are going to play into part of why this is a great play. The first thing we're going to do is show you how we can quick hike throw any type of cover three that leaves players in curl flats and don't doesn't do anything to the play. It's a quick hike opportunity. All I'm doing is leaving the defense the way it is. I'm going to hike it and I'm going to throw this ball to this player. Okay. It's a quick hike, and the reason why this works so well is because if somebody's just leaving themselves in curl flats, what you're going to see, and I want you to look at this defender right here, Jackson over the slot, he's going to freeze because he is going to have to play and jam the inside receiver, allowing this rounded comeback that's off the line of scrimmage to really get an outside release and up the field pretty quickly, right? So here we go. See that he's jamming. We're throwing it to him. We're going to get some easy yards, okay? So this is a nice quick hitting cover three beater and makes your opponent have to start doing some type of adjustments, okay? If they're in, a, that was if they're in a non-baseline. If they base the line, the first thing you're going to notice is that this player over here is going to come in. He is no longer on top of the B. He's playing on an inside type of uh, positioning, okay? What that's telling me is that I'm going to have a little bit less opportunity to hit the, or, uh, the X on the outside on the quick hitter. I can force it in there, but typically what's going to end up happening, it's not the slot receiver that's the issue, it's the outside player. And I'll show you that here, and then I'll show you what I do in, in, as an adjustment. Okay, all we're going to do, if I throw this over here, you can see that I can catch it if I get my player to go towards the sidelines, but you can see that the outside player played it a lot better. Okay, so all I'm going to do here now is I'm going to, when they're baseline, I'm going to carry it out. I'm going to let the X go down the field, and you're going to see that the player on the curl flat will not get over to the sidelines. He will stay on his numbers, okay? What I mean by that here, and I'll show you an instant replay, is that if they just base the line, this um, corner is going to basically jam his player, and he's going to stay on the numbers, He's not going to go to the outside, right? He's going and staying to the numbers until we throw the ball. Once we throw the ball, he'll break. But look at all that space you have to throw it. It's such a long comeback that you're going to have some easy success. You throw it to them, get your catch on the sidelines, okay? So that's baseline. The next thing people are going to do is they're going to play hard flats, okay? It's the next progression because they're saying, you know what? If he's throwing that hard to the X receiver really quickly, I want a player out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of that. 
All I'm doing is reading that slot corner in the left. If he breaks to the left, I'm throwing it to the RB. Okay. If he break, if he stays straight, I'm throwing it to the comeback on the quick throw. So we can basically do a, a really quick one, two hitter, right? He goes to the left. We're throwing this ball right here and we're going to have some easy catch. Now, the next thing we're going to do is kind of do what the next adjustment would be, which be hard flats. And we're going to user this player here over here. That's typically what most people do. Since I have two controllers, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave um, this guy unmanned up and pretend like he is the user. That is where the B route comes in. If I see that the user wants to jump the left side of the field quickly, I'm going to throw it to this B on a pass lead to the inside, right? So basically what you're going to see is he jumps the left side. I'm going to throw this ball right here and it's going to be an easy throw. This route gets enough depth and it gets enough cuts that you're going to be able to throw it. When I say um, you're able to do this, it's going to be pretty simple for you uh, because it, all you have to do is pass lead to the nine o'clock position or left on the D-pad. If they don't do hard flats, it's still going to work. I just want to make sure I show you that. Here's the throw and it'll work against curl flats, basically any other type of um, play as well. It's a really nice cover three route because of the way that it cuts to the inside in conjunction with the A that goes across the field. Next thing I want to show you is people are going to go to protect the sticks. The reason why they'll go to protect the sticks is uh, mainly because they're out of options. Typically, I like to run this play when it's not first and 10 because I know when protect the sticks happens, they're going to go to the 10, 11 yard mark and then they're going to sit there and wait for the ball to be thrown before they break. Well, there's two things we can do. The first thing we can do is we can elongate this X receiver. Okay, see how he breaks basically just past the 30. If I move this A tight end to the right, his route will get longer and about two to three yards. That's going to help him get behind the protect the sticks. Typically speaking, like I said, I want to run this on, you know, second and seven, second and six, second and four, third and four, something to where if they protect the sticks, they're not going to go very deep. I know that I'm going to take that into my advantage, right? Well, say they go ahead and they protect the sticks, uh, baseline protect the sticks. Two things are going to occur here. The first thing is that we've got the A that goes down. I'd rather put him on a in route. If I moved him over, I'm going to put him on in route. That way I get a little bit more yards on this. And I'm going to just do a one, two read. If I feel like I can throw it to the X, I'll throw it to the X. If not, I'm going to throw it to the A and get myself some easy yards. The A is going to be the guy that comes across. They're protecting the sticks. So you're just going to get five yards. It's one of those deals that it's real simple. Now, protect the sticks. I want to make sure you understand when I look at this instant replay is that this player is taught to basically go 10 yards, not jam number 12, and go to the outside. Watch how he goes to the outside. See how he goes there? That's going to open up that ability to throw a quick throw to 12 as well. Okay? And I'll show you that here. If they do just protect the sticks, right? Here's protect the sticks. I can still quick throw to RB right here. All right? It's something that you're throwing in traffic. I'm not saying that you want to make sure you have a, a good type of receiver that's going to hold on to it. But it is one of those deals that if you're having some trouble, just go ahead and throw this ball right here. Catch that ball and get yourself some easy yards. It's such a quick hitter that typically a user will not get over. And the reason why he won't is because you're going to want to run the ball. You're going to run stretch. You're going to run dive. You're going to run th uh, runs to the right that gets the attention of the user to make sure that he can't just sell out to the left. If he's selling out to the left, you're going to just run all over him because of the fact that, you know, he's taking false steps and he's trying to guess what you're doing, right? So that's why I really like this play when it comes against all different things. The one thing I haven't shown you is when you protect the sticks and you elongate this run, this, this route, this X, he can get behind coverage, okay? And the reason why you get behind coverage is because of how deep it is. Now, that's why I like to run this on second seven, second eight, six, whatever it is. But you're going to see that you're going to be able to throw this ball to this player, catch that ball, right? And it's easier to get this completion when it's not 10 yards to go. But in practice mode, we really can't mimic that. But I want to make sure that you see we elongated his route, okay? And when we did that, he gets behind the protective sticks. See the protective sticks basically, number 27, floats right there about the 40. We're going to turn this ball and we're going to throw it. 
we're going to have two to three yards more of separation to catch this before number 27 comes and hits us. And it's going to be an easy catch on second and seven. On first and 10, you're throwing it and you're going to want to make sure that your player can protect the ball before it gets hit to hold on to it. But it's a really nice route when you use it at the right time. Right time being anything that's shorter than first and 10 to go, right? So I just kind of wanted to show you how this works when it goes against cover three. Against cover two, I'll show you to you the same thing. If you thought it was cover three and you move this guy over and you're doing exactly the same thing here, you're going to get that elongated route X to get behind the cloud flat. He's going to be able to go ahead and sit down on that, wait a second, throw this ball, and catch the ball on the sidelines. Because he's so deep, He's able to do it. I wanted to specifically go against Gilmore so you guys could see, you know, somebody with really high um, reaction time. Um, that's why I put him on the left side of the field when typically he's on the right. But this play is definitely something that you can go to um, and really get your reads down. The read is really simple um, when you don't overcomplicate it. Read this player. If he goes this way, you can throw it to the, um, the slot. If he goes this way, you can throw it to the slot. If he stays there, then you want to quick hike throw it to the X, right? Um, and then if he basically, um, if, if you feel that you don't have that or the user jumps the left side of the field, you've always got the B coming across the middle. That's really going to help you out. Now, this isn't a play that you want to spam. This is a play that you want to throw in to really start making your opponent have to adjust to it. And when they start getting adjusty, what ends up happening is now the run game opens up. Other plays open up. If they have to worry about this specific play while you run this formation, you're way ahead of the game. Now, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure you check out these videos below for the most helpful Madden tips. If you're looking to learn from the best players in the world, head over to www.playbook.gg for the most detailed game plans in Madden.